When the boy came across a pack of six hungry wolves in the forest near his home, he was certain his life had come to an end. The night was heavy with silence, and Thomas could feel the icy air clinging to his skin. But suddenly, the situation took an unexpected turn, and the story ended in a completely unforeseen way. Thomas called for his dog by name, Lucky, his voice echoed through the dense forest, swallowed almost instantly by the trees, but there was no response. Lucky had picked the worst possible time of day to play hide and seek, it was almost 9 p.m., and the evening had grown darker than Thomas had expected, the shadows seemed to stretch and shift, making the forest feel like an endless maze, Thomas and his dog, Lucky, were home alone, his parents had left on urgent business, trusting him to stay safe indoors until they returned, they'd left strict instructions, stay inside, Thomas, don't go near the forest, we'll be back soon. But Lucky had other plans, when Thomas got distracted, Lucky slipped out of the house, his tail wagging as he darted towards the treeline, the forest loomed at the back of their property, a sprawling, wild expanse of towering pines and dense underbrush, it was beautiful in daylight, full of color and the songs of birds, but at night, it became something else entirely, it became mysterious, and, tonight, very dangerous, the forest was home to many creatures, including a pack of wolves, which were known to be seen roaming near the outskirts, especially on cold, clear nights like this one, Thomas couldn't abandon his poor dog, so he set out to find him, armed only with a small flashlight, the flashlight flickered slightly, barely cutting through the dense blackness between the trees, he could hear the dry crunch of pine needles beneath his feet, every step echoing louder in his ears than he wanted it to, lucky, he called again, his voice cracking slightly. He tried not to let fear take over, but every instinct was telling him that they shouldn't be here, suddenly, from his left, Thomas heard barking, the bark was frantic, repeating over and over, filled with desperation, though he couldn't see lucky yet, there was terror in the dog's voice, Thomas's heart lurched, lucky was in trouble, he pushed his way through some low branches, which scraped across his cheeks and caught in his clothes. He paid no mind. The fear for his best friend pushing him forward, Thomas raced toward the barking and stumbled into a small clearing where he saw Lucky, pressed back against a tree, barking at something, or perhaps at nothing, in the darkness, his eyes were wide open, and he was looking around frantically, Thomas rushed over, almost tripping over a root, and fell to his knees beside Lucky, he hugged the dog tightly trying to calm him down, he felt the dog's warm, shaking body against his chest and whispered. It's okay, it's okay, I'm here, but Lucky wasn't calming down, his eyes were still wide with fear, and he whimpered, his nose nudging at Thomas's side as if trying to warn him of something, Thomas was about to speak again when he heard it, a low, guttural growl, his blood ran cold, and he could feel a chill race up his spine, he turned his head slowly, the flashlight trembling in his hand as he swept it across the clearing, and then he saw them, yellow, gleaming eyes in the darkness. Each pair staring intently at him and Lucky, there were so many eyes, moving silently between the trees, the wolves had found them, and it seemed they intended to make Lucky their dinner, and Thomas, an extra dish on the side, the wolves began to emerge, stepping cautiously into the clearing, their grey fur blending in with the surrounding shadows, Thomas could see their sharp teeth, glinting in the dim light, there were six of them, and they surrounded the boy and his dog, circling slowly. Their movements calculated and deliberate, Thomas's legs began to tremble, and he could feel panic clawing at his insides, Thomas put Lucky behind him, trying to shield the dog from the wolves, Lucky pressed close, his whimpering growing louder, his usually happy eyes now filled with fear, Thomas dropped his flashlight, and in a split-second decision, he bent down and picked up a small stick from the ground, it was nothing compared to the wolves, but it was all he had. He held the stick in front of him, waving it as he shouted, trying to scare off the wolves, get away, leave us alone, his voice was shrill, desperate, he tried to sound brave, but the stick felt like nothing more than a flimsy twig in his hand, unfortunately, it didn't work, the wolves kept approaching, their eyes fixed on Thomas and Lucky, their tongues licking their chops as they crept closer, cold sweat broke out on Thomas's forehead, he waved the stick again, more frantically this time. But one of the wolves lunged at him, it bit down on the stick, its teeth sinking deep into the wood, it shook its head, and Thomas lost his grip, the wolf yanking the stick out of his hands and tossing it aside, Thomas swallowed the lump in his throat, he was so scared, he could hardly breathe, he looked at Lucky, whose ears were pressed flat against his head, his eyes wide with terror, 
Thomas's vision blurred with tears. He had to protect Lucky, but how could he? He was just a kid. And these were wild animals. The realization hit him hard. They weren't going to make it out of this. However, just as all hope seemed lost, one of the wolves suddenly stopped growling. It lifted its head, staring at Thomas with a different expression, one that wasn't filled with malice. The wolf seemed almost curious. It stepped forward, sniffing the air, and locked eyes with Thomas. The boy, wiping away his tears, hesitated. Something about this wolf felt familiar. It was the largest of the six, its fur thick and wild, and its eyes seemed to hold a recognition that Thomas couldn't quite place. The light from the flashlight, now lying on the forest floor, cast enough light for Thomas to see more clearly. The wolf's fur was mostly gray, but there was something unique about its legs, a pattern of black and white fur that was strikingly familiar. Thomas's heart began to pound faster, his breath catching in his throat. He knew those markings, he would recognize them anywhere. Jack, Thomas whispered, his voice barely audible, memories of their shared past flooded back to him, the memories that he had tucked away, thinking he would never see his old friend again, his family hadn't always lived so close to the forest, his parents had lived in the city their entire lives, but shortly after they got married, they decided to move to a more remote place. They wanted to raise their family away from the chaos and noise of the city, it had taken some time to get used to the silence. The way the world seemed to slow down when they moved to their new house at the edge of the forest, a few months after they settled in, Thomas's mother went into labor, it was a stormy night, thunder rumbled through the sky, and rain poured down, turning the ground into thick mud, the midwife who helped with Thomas's birth risked everything to get to their house that night, driving along winding, dark roads with lightning flashing in the sky, the labor was long and difficult, but as the sun began to rise, Thomas was born, his first cries filled the house, and his parents held him close, knowing that this was their new beginning, growing up surrounded by nature, Thomas thrived, he loved the forest, loved the way it seemed to stretch forever, full of mysteries to uncover, much to his mother's dismay, he was constantly exploring, always coming home covered in mud and dirt, his clothes torn from climbing trees or crawling through the underbrush, he was fearless, always eager to find something new, a hidden clearing, a new animal, anything that would make his heart race with excitement, his father had one rule, Thomas, never go into the forest at night, the forest could be dangerous. There were animals, and in the dark, it was easy to get lost, Thomas tried to obey, but his curiosity often got the better of him, on one of his many adventures, he stumbled across something he never expected, he was only four years old at the time, but already knew the nearby woods well, one day, as he walked along one of his favorite trails, he noticed a small figure ahead of him, just a few yards away. He squinted, trying to see what it was, but it was too far. He approached quietly, his small footsteps almost silent on the forest floor. As he got closer, he could see it, a tiny creature, curled up, its body rising and falling with rapid breaths. It looked like a puppy, but as he got even closer, he realized it wasn't a dog. When he brought it home, his father immediately recognized it for what it was, a wolf pup. Thomas's father's first instinct was to push Thomas behind him, to keep him away from the wild animal. But Thomas's wide eyes and innocent curiosity made him hesitate. The wolf pup looked sick, its breaths were shallow, and its small body shook with each inhale. The father knew they couldn't just leave it there, especially if the pup's mother was gone. He cautiously approached the pup, his eyes scanning the surrounding forest, searching for any sign of the mother wolf. He soon found her, lying a short distance away her body curled tightly, her breathing labored, she was badly hurt. And it was clear to Thomas's father that she wasn't going to make it, he sighed, a pang of sympathy filling his heart, before he could do anything, the mother wolf took her last breath, her eyes closing, leaving her pup all alone, Thomas's father decided then and there to take the pup home, if they couldn't save the mother, they would at least try to save her baby, the pup was sick and starving, and they called a vet, hoping they could do something for it, luckily. The pup was mostly just malnourished, and with some care, it began to recover. At first, Thomas's father planned to release the pup back into the wild once it was strong enough. He knew that a wild animal couldn't be truly tamed, and that the forest was where the pup belonged. But as days turned into weeks, he saw the bond that was forming between Thomas and the wolf. The boy and the pup were inseparable, always playing together in the yard, Thomas's laughter echoing through the trees. The pup grew stronger, and soon Thomas named him, Jack. 
Jack was special, his legs were marked with a unique pattern of black and white fur, a trait that made him stand out, Thomas loved those markings, often tracing them with his fingers as Jack napped beside him, Jack grew quickly, his body filling out, his eyes growing sharper, his senses more attuned to the forest around them, Thomas's father knew the day would come when Jack's wild nature would resurface, and he would have to leave. The day came sooner than expected, Jack had grown too large to stay in the house, and they built a small kennel for him outside. One day, Thomas's uncle came to visit, and Jack, wary of the stranger, growled, he bared his teeth, his instincts telling him that this man was an intruder. When the uncle tried to force his way inside, Jack attacked, his teeth sinking into the man's calf. The uncle was rushed to the hospital, and when he returned, he demanded that Jack be put down. Thomas, hearing what the adults planned to do, panicked, he ran outside, tears streaming down his face, and opened Jack's kennel. He called for Jack, leading him to the edge of the forest. Jack hesitated, his eyes filled with confusion. Thomas begged him to go, to run, to be free. Jack whimpered, nuzzling against Thomas's side. It broke the boy's heart, but he knew what he had to do. He picked up small stones and threw them, shouting at Jack until the wolf finally turned and ran into the forest. By the time the adults came out, Jack was gone. Thomas was heartbroken. He cried himself to sleep for weeks, the emptiness in his heart seeming to grow with each passing day. His parents, desperate to cheer him up, got him a new puppy, a small, lively dog that Thomas named Lucky. Lucky was sweet, full of energy, and brought a smile back to Thomas's face. But no matter how much joy Lucky brought, there was always a part of Thomas that missed Jack. Jack had been more than a pet, he had been a friend, a companion in a way no one else could be. Years passed, and Thomas grew older, he turned eight, and though he still loved the forest, he no longer explored it the way he used to, he had grown more cautious, the memories of Jack and the danger they had faced making him wary of the woods at night, but every time he heard a wolf howling in the distance, his heart would ache with longing, he never thought he would see Jack again. He believed that part of his life was over, that's why, when he found himself face to face with the wolves that night, and when he saw Jack among them, his heart swelled with both joy and fear, Jack was here, his old friend had come back, Thomas felt tears fill his eyes again, his voice shaking as he called out Jack's name, Jack's ears perked up at the sound of his name, he turned, his eyes locking onto Thomas's, for a moment, there was silence, a silence so deep. It felt as if the whole forest had paused, waiting, then Jack moved, he stepped forward, his body tense, and positioned himself between Thomas and the other wolves, Jack growled, a deep, resonant sound that filled the clearing, the other wolves hesitated, they looked at Jack, then at each other, one of them growled back, its hackles rising, it lunged at Jack, teeth bared, but Jack was faster, he met the wolf head on, his powerful body knocking it to the ground, the wolf yelped. Rolling onto its back in submission, the other wolves, seeing this, backed down, their eyes weary, one by one, they turned and slunk back into the forest, disappearing into the shadows. Thomas watched, his breath held, as Jack turned back to face him, his eyes were calm, and there was a softness there that made Thomas's heart swell. He took a step forward, his hand outstretched, wanting to touch Jack, to feel his old friend beside him again, but Jack stepped back, he looked at Thomas for a long moment, his eyes filled with something that Thomas couldn't quite name, then, without a sound, Jack turned and ran, disappearing into the forest once more. Tears rolled down Thomas's cheeks, a mix of relief and sorrow filling his chest. He was alive, Lucky was safe, and he had seen Jack again. But he knew, deep down, that this might be the last time. Jack belonged to the forest now. He was wild, and that was where he needed to be. When Thomas returned home, his parents were frantic. They hugged him tightly, scolding him for running off into the forest. He didn't try to explain what had happened, about Jack, about the wolves. It would be a secret, something that belonged only to him and Jack. That night, as he lay in bed, Thomas smiled. It was a smile filled with sadness and joy. A smile that spoke of lost friends and incredible reunions. He would never forget Jack, and though their time together had ended, he knew that somewhere out there, in the vast, dark forest, his friend was watching over him. That's today's story. After listening to the above two stories, do you have any thoughts? You can tell us in the comment area. If you like them, please subscribe and like them. See you next time.